We're now looking at properties of continuous functions. So if f and g are continuous at x equals a, so this if, f, and g, it means if we suppose that we have two functions which are already continuous at x equals a, and what does that mean? That means the limit equals the value. Uh, so if we already have two continuous functions, we'll look at this first one here, f plus g, which is f of x plus g of x, is continuous, uh, is continuous, and all of these are at x equals a. Uh, the sum of them is continuous, the difference is continuous, and these are all at x equals a. The product is continuous, and the quotient, or dividing them, is continuous. But you do need to make sure that uh, g of a, that you're not dividing by 0, or else you're undefined and you're not continuous, because it would not be in the domain. Also, you can raise it to a power right here, but you need to make sure that f of a to the n is a real number. So what do I mean by that? Well, probably the easiest example, let's say uh, f of a was negative one, which is a totally fine y value. But if you raise that to the half power, which is the square root, this is an imaginary number and is not a real number. So any of your even roots have to be positive. Uh, so for example, if it's one half or one quarter uh, or even a sixth or an eighth, that would be an even root. All of those would have to be uh, positive y values or else you'd have a complex number. What we're gonna do is prove the difference is continuous. So we're going to suppose we're going to suppose our if statement what we assumed here. So suppose f and g are continuous at x equals a. So I won't ask you to prove things on midterms and finals, but Proving them, we're going to use the definition, and that is a very uh, useful tool to remember definitions and get used to working with them. So we're going to suppose f and g are continuous at x equals a. We need to prove or show that f plus g, which is f of x plus g of x, is continuous at x equals a. Now, we haven't shown this. So I'm going to put it inside of this little cloud bubbly thing. That's what we want to show. And all we have to work with is knowing that f and g are continuous at x equals a. From here, I'm just going to apply what does the definition mean? So what does it mean to be continuous? That means that the limit equals the value. So that means f of x the limit as x approaches a is equal to f of a. So that's what the definition of x being continuous. And the limit of x plus a, uh, as x approaches a of g of x, because g of x was also assumed to be continuous. This also equals g of a. So we're going to look at the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x. So I think I said we're going to prove the difference is continuous. So we, we're going to look at the limit of f minus g. All right, what can we do here? We've already used the facts that they were continuous. So that's not going to help us here. But remember, way back to the limit rules, I think two, two days ago, Oh, maybe a week ago, the, some of the limit laws say you can take the limit and split it across subtraction. So this is equal to the limit, x approaches a, just f of x minus limit x approaches a, g of x. So this is just the limit laws from before, a couple sections back. 
that's the only thing we had to do here because now I can write in place of limit g of x, I can write g of a. So this is g of a right there. And in place of limit f of x, I can write f of a. And look at that. We have now shown f plus uh, f minus g. Oops, f minus g is continuous at x equals a because we took the limit of x minus g and got to f of a minus g of a. That means we showed the limit equals the value. And this is the definition of f minus g continuous at x equals a. So we are done here. When you're done with the proof, uh, a lot of people will just draw a square, color it in. Sometimes you can draw, draw a horizontal line if you want to separate it out. And ready to go on to the next topic.